So maraming maraming salamat uh, Pastora Ana, Pastora Lolet for inviting us this afternoon sa umpisa ng inyong month-long anniversary celebrations. Purihin ang Panginoon. Amen. Nelly. I very excited to be with you this afternoon and especially nung na-receive ko po yung uh, uh, team ng inyong uh, church and also yung scripture that was given to me uh, para aking uh, share sa hapong ito, mas lalo akong na-excite because of the wisdom, because of the very timely you know, lessons, very timely encouragement na na-discover natin uh, mula sa salita ng Panginoon. So once again, salamat sa Panginoon uh, for giving us this opportunity and privilege to celebrate with you your one decade in Japan. Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise God! Kayo ay bata pa lamang. You're just 10 years old. You're just 10 years old. <laughs> so another decade. Amen! Amen. Another decade. Praise the Lord. Salamat din sa faithfulness ni Pastora Ana, Pastora Lolet. You know, sabi ko nga kay Pastora Lolet kanina, pag tumagal ng isang missionary, especially like our case, uh, na wala talagang financial support, <laughs> ng six months, you're already more than conquerors. Amen. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your faithfulness, Pastora Ana, Pastora Lolet. And thank you also for the faithful love and support yung mga volunteers you know, sa church na nagbibigay ng kanilang sakripisyo in the doing, you know, the work of the ministry. Kasi ang church hindi po pwedeng pastor lang eh, no? Hindi rin po pwedeng member lamang. So kailangan kailang magkasama yan, tutulong-tulong. And it's wonderful to see that in this church. So praise God for KICF. Amen. The great church, great church from the Lord. So welcome, thank you for today. Uh, so uh, sa inyo dito, mga patiran sa KICF, uh, ito po ay uh, isang uh, maliit na bilin lamang. Uh, hiwalay ito sa aking preaching, pero maganda na sabihin ko na right up front kasi para hindi malimutan. Uh, so sikapin ninyo na sa susunod na sampung taon, Amen? 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 Amen. 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 <laughs> sa susunod na sampung taon, Gawin ninyong kagalakan para sa inyong mga pastor ang maglingkod sa inyo. Amen! So make it their joy to serve you. Sabi ng Bible, Hebrews 13, 17, Because it will be to your advantage. Kayo ang makikinabang pag ginawa ninyong kagalakan para sa kanila ang kayo ay paglingkuran. Amen? Praise God! Ready for God's word? Let's pray. Lord, salamat po sa hapong ito. We are so excited. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be with us. Bless me, Lord, as I share the word that you have allowed me to discover to this church. And especially, thank you, Lord, for this privilege that I will be uh, the very first one who will be sharing the word of God to them. Lord, I pray that you will prepare our ears, our minds, our hearts, Lord, for today's word. We bless you. We honor you. And we give you back, Lord, the praises because you are faithful who called us and you are faithful in pouring out your grace and your compassion in your church. We pray, we pray all these prayers in Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Praise God. So, ang ating pong uh, topic na binigay sa atin is uh, fulfilling God's sovereign plan where you are. Okay? So, where you are. Now that I am here, I need to fulfill God's sovereign plan. Kayo na narito, belonging to KICF, you know, merong sovereign plan ng Panginoon. And you as an individual, believer, merong sovereign plan ng Panginoon. So it doesn't matter kung kayo nasa Japan o nasa Pilipinas or anywhere else in the world or in the universe. What matters is you know that God has a sovereign plan for you. And God is encouraging you. God is helping you. God is equipping you. God is giving you resources for you to fulfill His sovereign plan. So, what a wonderful title, you know, and theme for this year. Fulfilling God's sovereign plan where you are. So, I am here today, but tomorrow I will not be here. But I need to remember that I need to fulfill 
God's sovereign plan for me, you know, for all eternity, and also from moment to moment that God is giving me to serve Him. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, tingnan natin ang uh, scripture natin ay natatagpuan sa Genesis 39 uh, verses 1 to 23. It is the story of Joseph, the one in the Old Testament. There are two famous Josephs. The other Joseph is in the New Testament. This one is in the Old Testament. So, para maintindihan po natin kung ano yung nangyayari, you know, dito sa kwento ni Joseph in the Old Testament, gusto kong makita po natin na kung paano ipinakikita sa atin ng Bible yung pagkilos ng Diyos upang iligtas ang sangkatauhan. Alam natin Genesis 1 and 2 is very ideal world. You know, heaven is on earth. Walang sin. God is with man. But you know, man sinned and from then on nangailangan ng redemption, nangailangan ng salvation ng tao. And from Genesis 3, especially Genesis chapter 3 verse 20, binigyan tayo ng isang larawan kung papaano ang kaligtasan ay dadalhin ng Panginoon. In 3.20 sabi doon, binihis ng Panginoon, pinalitan ng Panginoon yung bihis na dahon ni Adan at saka ni Eva, pinalitan ito ng skin of animal, which is a picture, you know, of a sacrifice, a shedding of blood far in the future na gagawin ng Panginoon para pagtakpan, hugasan at patawarin at iligtas ang tao mula sa kasalanan. And then, so, uh, yung picture na yon tinrabaho na yun ng Panginoon. I want us to see how God is moving, you know, to save us. Kasi yan yung grand story of the Bible and it's all started in Genesis. Para maintindihan natin kung ano yung bahagi ni Joseph, you know, doon sa story in the Genesis, then we need to see the big story of God's salvation, you know, in the book of Genesis. And then, ang pangako ng Diyos ay ililigtas niya ang buong sa katauhan sa pamagitan you know, ng isang Mesiyas. And it will start, you know, with one man. And so, God started with one man. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, tinawag niya si Abraham. At si Abraham, sabi ay, ibe-bless ng Panginoon uh, that Abraham will have a family. By then, wala pa siyang family, wala siyang anak. But sabi niya ang Panginoon, your family, you know, shall be a blessing to all the families of the earth, and your family will become a great nation. So God is beginning to work out His salvation. First and foremost, in Genesis 3, siya mismo by giving us the picture. And then in Genesis 12, by calling out Abraham. And then in the future, through a nation. Which is a nation called later on as Israel. Okay? So, gusto kong makita po natin yung progression na yun. And then, through that nation, far in the future will come the Messiah and His name is Jesus. So tayo ay nasa panahon ng New Testament ngayon. Jesus have already came. Jesus already died on the cross. Jesus already resurrected and went up to heaven and will be coming again. So tayo nabubuhay doon sa panahon na narito na ang kaligtasan ng Panginoon. Huwag po natin niyang kalilimutan. We are so blessed. We are so privileged that we are already living in the grace of God's salvation. Hindi na natin ito iniintay. Hindi ito mangyayari pa. Ito ay nangyayari na. All we have to do is to receive it and to become a part of that salvation project ng Panginoon to which every one of us ay tinawag ng Panginoon. And so, mababasa natin from Genesis 37 to 50 is the story, you know, of Joseph. Medyo naputo lang ito dun sa 38 ng kwento, you know, about Judah. And uh, the, the significance of that is, ipinakikita lang sa atin, you know, far in the future, merong misayas na manggagaling doon sa hindi magandang pangyayari in Genesis 38. But it's interesting that 37 to 50 is a very long chapter, no long chapters in the book of Genesis, it didn't evoke ito, you know, doon sa isang tao with the name of Joseph. So the story of Joseph gives us, again, the progress of God's redemption or salvation story through the family of Jacob. See, Jacob later on, you know, is known as Israel, and from his line came the nation of Israel. Kung paano sila ay pinagpala sa lupang banyaga in a foreign land. Amen, OFW? Yes. 
Amen. Praise God. Especially if you are an overseas Christian witness. Amen. Pinagpala sa lupang banyaga. And how God protected them. How God prospered them and made them plentiful that became a mighty army wherever they are. So KICF, I want you to believe that God will bless you, protect you, prosper you, and make you a mighty army in this land. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to get excited. Maybe more excited than I am. <laughs> so purihin ang Panginoon. And then, hindi plano ng Diyos na sila ay manatili as slaves. Amen. Hindi plano ng Diyos na sila ay manatili as second class citizen. Hindi yun plano ng Panginoon. God wants to redeem them from the land of Egypt. Ilalagay sila sa lupang pangako with which as a nation, Israel, sila ay magiging magandang tanglaw na ilaw sa lahat ng mga bansa upang ang lahat ng lahi ay sumampalataya din sa Panginoon. But we know the story in Old Testament na uh, kagaya rin natin sila, amen? Minsan tapat, minsan hindi tapat, minsan hindi matapat. <laughs> Ewan kung saan nakatapat. <laughs> Pero doon tayo sa laging tapat. Amen? Praise God. Kung meron po na tinamaan ngayon, hindi po sinasadyang matapat. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So, it's interesting that the book of Genesis devoted so much space, you know, for the story of Joseph. So, I encourage everyone to reread your Bible, especially in Genesis 39, verses 1 to 30, 23. Uh, again, this is not the whole story in the life of Joseph. It is only a part, you know, of the story of the life of Joseph. Yung ganap dito, yung nangyayari dito, so only a part of the story in, in Genesis. Yung merong larger picture. But this is very important sa atin ngayon lahat. On the occasion of the 10-year anniversary ng KICF, you know, as an inspiration from the Lord, as an instruction from the Word of God, and hopefully, by the help of the Holy Spirit, ma-embrace ito ng KICF both here in person and KICF Global, may embrace ninyo ito so that you'll be able to partner, to engage, you know, and to actively enjoy, you know, yung inyong privilege doon sa God's salvation activity here in Japan and in all parts of the world. Amen. Amen. So, uh, let's go to the story, you know, ni Joseph. In uh, Genesis uh, 39 verses 1 to 23. So now let me read to you, you know, the story ni Joseph. Sundan nyo na lang po ako sa inyong mga Bible. Sabi po rito, I'll be reading from the NIV. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph, so that he prospered. He lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes, and he became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put Joseph in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and also in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now the twist of the story. Now, Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. 
But Joseph refused. With being charged, he said, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you. Because you are his wife. How then could I do such wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even to be with her. One day, Joseph went into the house to attend to his duties. And none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in his hand and had run out of the house, she called to her household servants, Look, she said to them, This Hebrew has been brought to us to make a sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him the story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make a sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him his kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those who are in prison. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So there was the short story of the long story that was recorded in the book of Genesis about the life of Joseph. And this is a very important story. Kasi nagsimula ang kwento ni Joseph in Genesis 37 and then pinutol ito, you know, again with a, a not so good story in 38 about Judah, the, the immoral relationship of Judah. And then in contrast to that, in Genesis 39, Makita natin dito that God is showing that there is another righteous person that is willing to stand, that is willing to be who God wants him to be. And his name is Joseph. So despite of the day-to-day -day invitation to immorality and sin against God, he triumphed. But his success is very costly. At sinasabi dito that he was put into prison. So let me share to you the lessons that I've learned from this short story in Joseph's life. So number one is we need to focus on our God-given destiny. You want to fulfill God's sovereign plan in your life wherever you are? Your focus should be on your God-given destiny. Naintindihan ko na araw-araw maraming umaagaw sa ating atensyon. Both, you know, as a person and as a family, maybe in the community, maybe in the church. But our focus should be, what on earth, you know, am I here for? Ano ang purpose ng Panginoon sa akin? Ano ang plano ng Panginoon na ako ang dapat tumupad? Going to church is only a part of that. But you need to discover the great plan of Jesus kung papaanong ikaw at ako ay magagamit ng Panginoon sa ikaliligtas ng marami just like Joseph did just like Joseph did you know in uh, in Genesis 
So focus on your God-given destiny. Where you are now should lead you to where God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if it's victory or defeat. It doesn't matter if it is health or sickness. It doesn't matter if it's plenty or few. Where you are now should lead you not to where God wants you to be. Sometimes na discourage tayo. You know, mga bagay na nakikita natin sa paligid natin o mag sa sarili natin buhay. Pero hindi dapat ang titingnan palagi natin is where is God leading me? Where is my God-given destiny? Saan ako dapat pumunta? So I want to challenge you, KICF, this afternoon to the leadership of your wonderful, our covenant prayer partners, yung inyong pastor, through their leadership, where is God leading you in the next 10 years in Japan and in the world? And it doesn't matter what's happening right now. Even at this very moment, it doesn't matter. You know, mahalaga ay ito ay maglilid sa atin doon sa ating God-given destiny. So I want to encourage Pastor Anna, Pastor Loret, and the KICF Church. You know, don't look at what is going on around you. Look to Jesus. Because Jesus is our shepherd. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, in Joseph's case, you know, focusing on the God-given destiny is never easy. In Joseph's case, para pumako siya doon sa gusto ng Panginoong mangyari sa kanyang buhay, hindi ito convenient sa kanya. Alam niyo ang isang natutunan ng maraming Kristiyano, okay, bubusin na ako kasi may masa sa kasana ko. Ang natutunan ng maraming Kristiyano, or ilan siguro, you know, during the pandemic is convenience to be in the comfort zone of their homes to worship God, not attending physically. You know, just just try try to imagine this and see the logic, see the reasoning. Okay? Ang business nagsisikap you na know, magbumalik doon sa in-person. Yung eskwelahan, ganun din. Ang mga hospital, ganun din. Maging yung mga entertainment you know, uh, places, ganun din. Nagsisikap sila na to be in person. Uh, not not careless, but in caution, you know, with, with all the health protocols. But I want you to see, believers, they are already nagsisikap na sila manumbalik doon sa bagong normal. And here we are, believers, is still lounge, you know, para tayong mga lazy potatoes, you know, sa ating mga bahay. You know, not giving any sacrifice to be in the house of God. No, let's check our hearts where we are. For Joseph, it is never easy and convenient to follow where God wants him to be. But he did. Isipin po natin ang pinanggalingan, pinagdaanan ni Joseph. Galing siya sa isang dysfunctional family. Yung dysfunctional family, nireject siya. Hindi tanggap ng magulang niya ang kanyang pangarap. Remember ang pangarap niya galing sa Diyos. Hindi tanggap ng magulang niya. Hindi tanggap ng mga kapatid niya. So doon sa dysfunctional family, saan siya natin na kita after that? Sa balon, itinapon siya ng kanyang mga kapatid. At naghihintay ng pagbebentahan sa kanya bilang slave. And then the slave traders came. So from the pit, you know, to the slave traders, from the slave traders, the next thing we see, nasaan siya? Nasa auction. Pina- ino-auction siya as a slave. And then doon sa auction, sa natin siya nakita? As a servant ni Potiphar in the Egyptian official. That's not easy. Somebody who wants to be devoted to God, that's never easy. At kung ako siguro si Joseph, I am maybe already questioning God. Lord, Alam mo puso ko, nagsisikap akong lumapit sa'yo, but why are these things happening to me? But remember, focus on your God-given destiny. It might not be easy, it might not be convenient, but focus. So know God's destiny for yourself. Iba-iba po yung pathways natin. Ang pathways namin is to be in the full-time ministry. But many of you, or OFWs, Ibang pathways in your, through your profession. So discover your pathways. 
Sabi ng Panginoon sa Latan, we have a race that is set before us. Meron tayong kanyang-kanyang takbuhin. Alamin mo ko ano para sa iyo. Saliksikin mo ang Diyos. Minsan hindi natin maintindihan o malaman kung ano ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin kasi hindi naman tayo nagtatanong. Ang tinatanong natin, Pastor, ba, ano ba Pastor ang kalooban ng Diyos sa akin? Ba't hindi yung Diyos ang tanungin mo kasi siya may kalooban sa iyo? Somebody say, Amen! Amen! So, uh, you know, the pastor has the wisdom to guide you. Pero hindi sila yung ultimate na makapagsasabi kung anong layunin ng Panginoon. You need to ask God. Seek God. Spend time with God. Lord, ano ba ang iksi ng buhay sa mundo? 70 years, 80 years. Kung pinalad-palad ka, 90, 100, 110. Grabe, makunat na yun. <laughs> very, very short. But God, even if it's 200 years on earth, That's very short compared to eternity. Ano ba ang value ng no, maiksing panahon niya yun na maibibigay ko sa iyo? So you have to know, okay? So this is common for every one of us. Sa lahat ng mga believers, you know, God's will for every single believer is to make Jesus known and to live for His honor. That's equal among us. Regardless kung ano ang iyong ministry sa church, it doesn't matter if you're pastor or not, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, kung uh, kayo ay uh, matagal ng Kristiyano o hindi, uh, this is equal for every one of us. God's will for us is to make Jesus famous and to live for His honor. Secondly, be aware of God's work in your life. Nakarinig na ba kayo kapag kayo ay nag small group and you ask somebody for a testimony and then ang testimony ang ibibigay sa inyo ng inyong kasama sa small group is 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 3 years ago, or last year? Yeah. Ilan po sa atin kaya ang kakain ng isang dish, okay, na yung dish na yon is 1 year old? Amen. <laughs> Wala palagi ko, no? <laughs> Kanina, pagpasok ko kanina, uh, diretso sa kusina, no? parang akin itong church, no? <laughs> Nakita ko meron itong pizza. So, so, praise God. It looks so good. It looks so fresh. You know, yung pizza. So, ilang po sa ating kaya ang kakain ng pizza na one month old? Wala, no? Pero sometimes, you know, yung ating, yung ginagawa nandiyo sa buhay natin, we are not aware, kaya wala tayong testimony, kundi yung mga 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 3 years ago. You know. Para bang ang Diyos ay na-encounter mo lamang 10 years ago? So keep it fresh, kapatid. Keep it fresh. Sa church ay meron kaming ginagawa na tinatawag namin ay gawim. God at work in me testimonies. Gawin. God at work in me. So ang focus is, ano yung ginagawa ng Diyos sa buhay ko? Kasi yung Holy Spirit, kumikilos yan sa atin every single moment ng ating buhay. Amen? Amen po ba? Amen. amen. Alam nyo, mag amen kayo pagka nire-require ng pastor na mag-amen kayo. Kasi ano yung kontra-antok yan eh. Kontra-antok yan. <laughs> So, <laughs> be aware of the transformation that the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. So, my question today should be, ano ba yung nabago na sa akin, bahagi yun ang kahapon ko na wala na ngayon? Amen? Pero pag tinatanong minsan ng pastor, ayaw ko sa inyo pastor, ano? Pero sa akin minsan, pag natanong, kamusta na kapatid? Excited ka pa eh. Pastor, ganun pa rin po. <laughs> wow! So be aware. Keep it fresh, kapatid. Ganun, you know, kaya pagising mo, na-freshen up ka na agad eh. Di ba? You want to look fresh. So make your relationship with Jesus fresh also. Make your encounter, experience with God as fresh, you know, as His loving kindness and mercy every single day. Sabi nga sa Lamentations 3.23, di ba? 
Sabi, ang pag-ibig ng Diyos at kagandahang loob ay laging bago tuwing umaga. Amen? Kahit ang hali ka ng magising, no, bago pa rin yun. Kasi kagigising mo lang, yun ang umaga mo. <laughs> Praise God. Ang malungkot kasi, maraming mga mana ng palataya, uh, hindi nila alam kung ano ginagawa ni Lord sa buhay nila. Wala silang kapulok-lok, ano bang ginagawa? Ano ka pang ginagawa ni Lord sa... Uh, Oo nga, no? ano ka pang ginagawa ni Lord sa buhay ko? Parang nakatingin sa akin na ang lalim na iniisip. Ngayon pa lang nag-iisip. Ngayon pa lang I love you. <laughs> Amen. I love you. I love you, church. <laughs> Kaya pag tinanong, uh, sabi ni, ang tinanong is like, what is God doing in your life? Ano ginagawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo? Ang sinasagot is, kung ano ang ginagawa niya para sa si Lord. Ah, opo, pastor, ako po ay nasa worship team. Sis, tama yung sagot mo, kaya lang mali yung tanong ko. <laughs> so ulitin ko yung tanong ko, ano ang ginagawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo, hindi yung ginagawa mo para kay Lord. Amen. Amen. Keep it fresh. Amen. Sariwa yan palagi. Okay. So alam na, ano ni Joseph? <laughs> Masaya salita ng Diyos, no? <laughs> alam ni Joseph, that the Lord is with him. Imaginein po ninyo paulit-ulit yun. Na binanggit doon sa isang chapter na yun. Alam niyang kasama niya ang Diyos. Walang kaduda-duda. Kaya nung inaraw-araw siya ni Mrs. Potiphar. Come, baby. Come with me, baby. Ano sagot ni Diyos? Eh? How? Can I sin against God? Kasi conscious siya sa presence ni Lord sa buhay niya. Aware siya kung anong ginagawa ng Panginoon sa buhay niya. No doubt that God is with him. To the point na yung ibang tao kita rin na kasama niya ang Diyos sa buhay niya. Mga kapatid, yan ang pinakmahalaga para sa atin bilang mga mananampalataya. Not the blessings. Erase yun na yan. The most important truth that we can experience is that God is with us. Amen. Ano yung mga blessing kung wala ang presensya ng Diyos? Ano yung mga magandang buhay kung wala ang presensya ng Panginoong Diyos? Galing na tayo doon eh. Ba't babalik ka pa doon? Ngayon ikay nga sa Kristiyano na kung ikaw ay sumusunod na sa Panginoon sa Kristo, make sure that you have a fresh experience of Jesus every single day. At alam din ni Joseph that even though he's going through difficult, inconvenient, uh, very challenging moments, alam niya that God is leading him to his God-given destiny. Para kay Joseph, sabi niya, okay lang, kahit anong mangyari ngayon, alam ko, kung saan ako magtatapos. Dahil kasama ko ang Diyos. Amen. May this be an encouragement to this church. So it doesn't matter where you are right now. Be aware of what God is doing you, doing in you as a church. And be aware that God is leading you as a church. So verses 2 and 3, tingnan po natin. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Same chapter, verses 5 and 6. Inulit, the blessing of the Lord was on everything because of Joseph. Now, so verse 20 and 21 are Roman. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. Minsan naman yung tatang sa akin, Pastor, hindi ko na po madama si Lord sa buhay ko. Aba, mapanganib yan! <laughs> Bakit po ganun? Hindi po nagpaparamdam si Lord sa akin. <laughs> Baka na-unfriend ka na. Ano <laughs> 
Verse 23 says, The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with him. Be aware of what God is doing in your life. Joseph had a conscious awareness that God is at work in his life. Kayo po ba may kamalayan na nasa church kayo ngayon? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Meron iba kasi yan. Tingin eh. Parang, oh, pati ko nandito. <laughs> Anong nangyari? <laughs> Yung iba naman nandi dito, pero ang diwa, wala. Dumilipat. Hmm. Hulihin ulit at ibalik. <laughs> Delikato pag naghiwalay ang diwa at ang katawan. <laughs> so be aware, you know, what God is doing in your life. Alam nyo kapag uh, alam na alam mo na kasama mo ang Panginoong Diyos, wala kang takot. Ang kapayapaan ng Diyos ang babalot sa puso mo at sa isipan mo. Hindi ka mga ngamba sa kinabukasan. Kasi alam mo, kasama mo ang Panginoong Diyos. Saan ka man pumunta, bumabagyo man o maaraw, ito ay hindi nakakabahala sa iyo. Kasi ang pinakamahalaga para sa iyo ay ang presensya ng Panginoon. As a church, as believers, tayo iba't ibang seasons ang ating dadaanan. Jesus did not promise, you know, a life that is easy. Jesus promised that He will be with us, never to leave us, nor forsake us. So para doon sa nagtatanong sa akin na, Pastor, bakit hindi po nagpaparamdam si Lord? Siguro hindi ka nagpaparamdam sa Kanya. That's a good time to say Amen. Walang <laughs> tayo <laughs> Hindi pa nakasink. <laughs> now let's live in sync with Jesus. Si Joseph in the Old Testament ay larawan ng darating ng Panginoon sa Kristo. Siya kasi ay isang pinakamamahal na anak. Jesus is also God's own beloved son. Si Joseph willingly, he went through you know, the race, his life that is assigned for him. Para doon sa grand purpose, sabi ni Joseph with his own words, for the saving of many people. Jesus in the same way, went to the cross, gave his life in order to save humanity. So, kalarawan siya, isang larawan that in the future, it is not the son of man anymore, but it will be the son of God who will pay the sacrifice for the salvation of many. At ang bawat isa sa atin, we have our own stories. And my story, and your story, the story of the church that I'm pastoring now, and the story of this church, ay may bahagi doon sa dakilang kwento ng pagkilos ng Diyos sa pagliligtas ng maraming tao sa sanlibutan. So let's live in sync with Jesus. Paano natin ito gagawin? Embrace your God-given destiny. Be aware of God's work in your life. And lastly, move forward with God even when circumstances are discouraging. Sulong lang. Magpatuloy lang. Ako na lang mag-isa, Pastor, eh, natitira sa worship team. Praise God! One man band ka. <laughs> Hallelujah! You have to look at it. You know, as a privilege, amen? Uh, dati-dati, you know, uh, sabi, ay, ayoko, puno na ang church, you know, ayoko na punta, sikip na eh. Uh, pero ngayon, ano, maluwag ang church. So, pag nandi dito, so you can sing your heart out. Kasi pagka marami, hindi madinig yung boses mo, you know. So, ngayon, pagka, you know, limitado na, numbers, you can sing your heart out, and you can participate, you can engage, 
Ang daming gawain sa church. Magiging kapakipakinabang ka para sa Panginoon. So let's live in sync with uh, Jesus. Embrace your God-given destiny. Be aware of His work in your life. And move forward with God even when circumstances are discouraging. Pastor Lole, Pastor Anna, thank you for the covenant prayer partnership that we have with you. Uh, encouragement kayo sa amin, you know, also in serving in this great nation of Japan. And KICF together with JOSCF, you know, is a big testimony not only to the Filipino Christian community in Japan, but also to the larger body of Christ dito amongst the Japanese churches. So God who started a good work in you, remember this Philippians 1.6, mm -hmm. He will accomplish it until the day of His return. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's all be fulfilled by fulfilling God's sovereign plan in our lives wherever we are. May the Lord bless His word in our hearts. Lord, we honor you for the time of looking into your word. We ask you by your grace and your Holy Spirit, please deposit this word and cause it to prosper and bring a harvest of great honor and great salvation to your name. Amen.